Drone Vlog 16. Hey guys, it's Adam and Jay in the AeroWorks workshop and breaking news, the Mavics have arrived. Yes. Well, I think we ordered them, what, last week or uh, <laughs> yes. was it like, no. oh no, two and a half months ago, that's right. <laughs> uh, but hey, they're here and I know it's not breaking news, but we thought we'd share uh, a few of the tips and tricks uh, that we discovered in just unboxing these guys and checking them out. And uh, one of the first things you're always going to have to do with any new DJI product is you're going to have to update the firmware uh, along with activating it for the first time. So you're going to plug in, it's going to say you need to activate it, give it a name, uh, and then there's usually always an update. In this case, it was a pretty big update. It was about a 135, 145 megabytes. Uh, and you do that all through the app, which is the Go4 app, and the radio. And in my case, I had a little bit different uh, experience than Jay. Uh, I was on Wi-Fi at home and I went to do the update and it just kept stopping and said, you know, if it doesn't work, try it again, reboot the copter, reboot the tablet and so on. Never seemed to work for me. I came off of Wi-Fi and it immediately worked. Now you didn't have that same experience, I had no issue. Right? I was on my home network and it took a little bit of time, but yeah, it nothing, took about 10 or 15 yeah, months it got nothing. going. Nothing out of the ordinary for me on the firmware. Right. Yeah. And again, with, with any firmware update or uh, first time or update, uh, after you get done with that update, you want to make sure and go through all of those main settings, like your return to home altitude. We're, we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, your, your, all your settings, you know, if you want your obstacle avoidance on, your max altitude and distance and all those things, as well as doing an IMU calibration. Absolutely. And on the P4 Pro and the uh, Mavic, it's a little different. Uh, you don't just set it on the table and don't move it. You actually have to set it on all four sides. And when you start that process, it actually shows you a picture of it, tells you to set it on the top, then you set it on the side, and it, a little green dot will go across and actually show you that it's done. So a little bit different than the P4, uh, before the P4 Pro and beyond when you actually just set it on a flat surface and hit IMU calibration. Now you actually have to hit basically all six sides almost. Yeah, that actually threw me for a loop. I'm sitting there waiting, I'm waiting, it says updating and updating, and finally I look down and it Said, oh, I'm like, oh, it's on its side. Why is it on its side? So yeah, that was something I <laughs> ran across the exactly. wrong way. <laughs> yep. One thing though, I will have to admit, very impressed with the size, right? And you are a yeah. size guy when it comes to traveling. <laughs> I am, yeah, with travel, um, you know, traveling to Mexico or just out west to Arizona and California, taking the P4, I have it in a, a nice GPC backpack love it but again it's heavy and then i get all my other my ipads and all my other stuff in there and it, it's got some weight to it right but with this now with travel this right here and then putting it into this and then i can put it into a different backpack that i carry my other stuff with yep. um it, it's definitely going to be more ease of travel with this right. and even with like going to mexico you know you don't have to if you have a p4 in a big case they're going to say what's this they may not even notice this right. sitting in the bottom looks like of a my... little point and shoot camera bag. yeah right exactly what do you think of the bag though <laughs> um i like the bag i think it's nice it's you know got all the pockets and everything i just think that it had this just come out with the regular uh mavic it would have been great but with the combo when you have the quad charger and this charger two batteries, and the, two extra batteries, and extra batteries and a, a car charger. You run out of room with tight. yeah, without stuffing it and stuff. Yeah. Love it though. I mean, I think it's it's perfect uh, for just hey, let's go and you just right. throw it in your car and you never know. Opposed to the big one, I love my P4. Don't right. get me wrong, but yeah, for travel and just grab it and go. Yep. Yeah, it works really good. Like it. it's kind of like the days of uh, carrying the big camcorder around or now you can carry your iPhone or a point and shoot. <laughs> right. Do the same thing. Kind of the same uh, concept there. Now the batteries, if you get the fly more combo, you, you essentially end up with three batteries. You get one with the, the drone itself and two additional. Uh, again, these follow along with all the other DJI batteries. You push it once to see the, the level. Charger's the same, a little bit different on the connectors. The Fly More Kit, you do get the combo, which is nice. You can actually put four batteries on there and actually have them all going uh, consecutively. They don't charge all at the same time, but you can set them down and kind of forget them. One of the things we always do, put a label on your battery, whether that's a sticky label, uh, sticker, you write it on, whatever. 
the reason we do that is um, you want to try and cycle through all of your batteries. You don't want to just keep recharging battery one over and over and saving the other ones. Uh, you want to run one down, put it on the charger, run through two and three and so on. That way all of your batteries kind of get a full cycle. They're always getting charged and discharged. It's better for the life of them. You don't want to leave them powered up or excuse me, charged up and just sitting in the bag. Even though we do have that auto discharge, you know, the three, five, seven, 10 day thing, it's still better to either leave them at 40% or actually use them, uh, you know, a lot. So that's that's a big thing with batteries. Um, anything else on batteries that you have that you? I, yeah, other, I, other than that, I think it's just a good idea to, to do it. Um, and then that way, you know, you, all your batteries are, are in good shape and you right. don't have to worry about them. They're all kind of the same amount of uh, lifespan too. Right. So you've got, and we got one of our callers calling in here. <laughs> Already? No, the phone lines know. aren't even open yet. <laughs> and we've got callers. Um, but yeah, the batteries are great. There's nothing really else to tell you there. Uh, you know, DJI batteries, take care of them. They'll take care of you. Uh, make sure you don't leave them charged, leave them in a hot car, things like that. Right. What else do we want to do safety-wise with this? We want to register That's with the right. FAA. Uh, we don't want you to be out in the field and because eventually people, the FAA, are going to be doing spot checks. So yeah. it's a $5 charge. We'll have it down in the, yep. in the comments down there what, you know, where to go and register. Don't get fooled by the ones that cost $19 yeah. that they'll do If you're work. searching in, uh, for drone <laughs> registration, you come to a site that's anything but the FAA's website, uh, steer away from that. That's not the right site. The correct site, we'll put a link down there, but I think it's registermyuas.faa.gov is the right. website. That's the one you want to go to. If you're a hobbyist, it's $5 for your all your drones. If you're a commercial, it's $5 for each drone, and we've done videos on that. You can check those out down below. Yeah, but other than that, I mean, you should be fine. Just, you know, anything over uh, the weight of a stick of butter is essentially what it is, point. Uh, zero five zero point five five pounds. Right. So, one thing that's come up a few times, and we see this in not just the Mavic forums, but P4, Inspire, everything is return to home. We, we're, we're getting a lot of new pilots. Again, Christmas just came around. You know, what altitude do I set for my return to home altitude? Well, the right answer is you want to set it to whatever the highest obstacle is in the area that you're flying. So, if where we're at right now, there's a tree that's 75 feet. I need to make sure that my drone will clear at least 100 feet to be safe. Right. Uh, we get some of those guys that just say, oh, I set it to 300 feet or 100 meters and I'm good everywhere. That, that's not the best uh, option because when a drone, pretty much all the manufacturers, if it's going to do return to home, the first thing it has to do is get up to that return to home altitude. So if you lose connection, if you're low on batteries, whatever that return to home issue is, or maybe you just push it because you're scared to land yourself, you push return to home, you could be you know, 40 feet away from you, the first thing it has to do is rock it up to 300 feet. Now, if you're low on batteries, you're going to drain those batteries down. And we've seen some cases where guys have depleted it so much that the drone just kind of quit responding because it ran out of juice trying to climb up there. And that's mm -hmm. where it's drawing the most power is in a climb, running all those motors to climb up there. So again, do yourself a favor, set the return to home uh, each time you go out. And it doesn't mean that if there's a tree three blocks away, you need to make sure you clear that. As long as if you're flying in this area, just set it to whatever the highest thing is. And I mean, if, you're, if you're not sure, pop up real quick, take a look around, make note of the altitude, and say, okay, I'm going to add 10 or 20 feet to that. I mean, if you're in the desert where the highest thing you have is a, a cactus that's right. you know, 25 feet, set it to 60 feet. I mean, yep. no sense in having it go up any higher than you need it to exactly. to exhaust that battery. So. Yep. What else do we got here? Well, we got a lot of accessories, that's we for do. sure. Um, if you do get the Fly More kit, uh, you get the two batteries, you get the, the uh, I guess they call it the charging hub, I was gonna say a quad output, but it's a charging hub, you get extra props, you get a cigarette light adapter so you can charge on the fly, which is nice because this is kind of marketed and targeted towards those people that are on the go traveling and things. You also get a little adapter that turns your one of your batteries into a essentially an iPhone charger. So if you're or iPad or iPad, so if you if you're out there and you're using your iPhone and uh, you've realized, well, I've been flying for a half an hour because these do last 27 to 30 minutes. Um, now my phone's almost dead. You could give yourself a little boost using the uh, the accessory there. Again, you want to use your batteries for flying, hopefully, but in a, in a pinch, you could use that. And I don't know if anybody else has a problem, but we're using the iPhone 6S Plus. Yep. And in the cold weather where we are in Wisconsin, 
for some reason, well, as soon as we get outside, our batteries go quick on yep. these phones, and so you want to make sure that you're going to have your phone charged. Right. And, you know, and in my case, they don't even always drain down. They just, just think they're drained down. Right. Uh, I even started sticking a little uh, hand warmer on the back when it's really cold out. Again, I think they recommend you don't go out below 30 degrees with these, but you know we've all tried it. <laughs> and we wouldn't be flying if yeah. that was the case. Now, there are a few accessories out there that people are adding to these. Hey, put whatever you want on. You want to yep. put curb feelers on it? Do that. But I don't really get the point. The whole idea is this thing is compact, right? right? So why would I want to put prop guards and all these extra stuff on there? If you want to, that's fine. DJI has pretty much perfected the drone. Uh, so, you know, same thing with props. You know, carbon fiber, not really needed anymore. They, they fly these things in the, in the lab and in wind tunnels, and they know what's the best efficiency as far as the weight of the prop to the torque of the motor and all that. Leave it alone. It works great, you know. And on our Inspire, how many flights do we have on our Inspire oh. with the, the same props? Yeah, exactly. Well, they, they recommend you change those at least every yeah. 200 flights. But, but, I mean. Yeah, hundreds of flights on right. those things. No issues. Uh, and that's what all the flight times are based on. So when you start adding adapters and things to the motors, you're changing all those parameters. You may think you got a cool prop or something, but, again, the stock stuff for the most part is the way to go. So we would like to, we're by no means experts because these just came nope. in yesterday. So <laughs> if you've got really cool tips, something you found out, something new in the menu, we're going to dive uh, deeper into it in some future vlogs and future training videos. But if you've got some tips, post them down below. Make sure you like and subscribe. What did we find out about our... <laughs> well, it's amazing, YouTube. So about 94, 96% of all of our viewers aren't even subscribers. So that's crazy. So if you watch the video, you like the video, check out our other videos. There's links on the side and all that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because we do put out videos quite often. We fly all of the aircraft, not just DJI. We fly other brands too. But we do cover all of the popular brands. We do training videos. We do training sessions. So... Uh, a lot of good things there. Uh, one thing that I didn't talk about, we don't have one on the table here, is our second edition UAS logbook for commercial yeah. operators. So uh, that's out. We'll put a link down there for that. If you're flying commercially, uh, you need to keep those logbooks, and it's a nice way to keep everything in order. It has a laminated checklist. It has a camera focus card. Right. It's got a 100-page yeah, logbook just... and a maintenance record in the back. So uh, it's our new updated version from the one we came out earlier in the year. So this way, if the FAA does do a ramp check on you yep. when you're out, you can say, here's my log book, and they'll yep. say, oh, you know, with a ring binder, and they can just flip through it. They probably won't look at it, but they can at least see right there by just producing a book like that, that, hey, these guys know what's going on. So, yep. you know. So guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe because that's important. And don't forget to put your tips so we can uh, maybe address those and see where we're going. And uh, oh, and, and order now because you can get them in four or five days now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's no. I just got an email today. You can yeah. get it five to seven days. It's yeah. like, okay, I'm gonna have to right. Anyways, all right. Have a good one, guys. Thanks. Everything you